I think that the main points and that uh, I was uh, completely satisfied that uh, today it was a real discussion, real discussion, because that, uh, you know that if we look uh, a little bit in the history of this platform, it starts like uh, the platform between the, in that uh, relationship Kazakhstan and uh, uh, Germany. But now today the Berlin Eurasian Club is becoming a platform of uh, relationships between not only Germany but uh, the European Union with the whole region Central Asia. Just look at uh, how the, that, uh, my colleagues, uh, the ambassadors of uh, Uzbekistan, ambassador of Kyrgyzstan, uh, participated uh, to this uh, uh, discussion today and how they expressed their opinion. And, uh, Nevertheless, uh, and I would like to say that all, all participants uh, that uh, in common sense that they stressed that the importance of uh, such platform and the importance of uh, relationships between that European Union and Central Asia. And for us, it's a uh, uh, good sign because that uh, you know that uh, uh, Kazakhstan was the first state who uh, signed a special that uh, platform uh, with a. Uh, uh, of cooperation with the European Union and we would like that uh, this platform should be common for all uh, we hope that that, that can be the very useful for all Central Asian countries as you say Kazakhstan is a long-standing relationship with the European Union and other countries are getting on board what do you want from the EU at this point there is a strategy there what more would you like to see from the European Union side European Union said that, uh, that uh, as far as myself that uh, I am in charge of the economic relationships and, and uh, for uh, the attracting investment uh, in our ministry and that of course that uh, I'm interested uh, to get much more investment from uh, the countries of uh, European Union and uh, we have to create conditions for these uh, countries and uh, today that some people told about the uh, standards and the regulations and, that, uh, and of course that uh, it means that uh, we have to expand discussion not only on the framework of Central Asia but also uh, we have to talk about the Eurasian Economic Union and uh, the standards of uh, OECD countries too and uh, that's for very important and that, uh, that I think that next uh, next uh, sessions uh, should be devoted to these uh, issues. Yeah, the Eastern Business Association is a traditional, very traditional German association which uh, supports German business in Eastern Europe, in Eastern and Central Europe, in 29 countries. So east of Germany, from Poland to Tajikistan. For us it's a very important economic area because it stands uh, more than for for 20 percent of German foreign trade. It's more than the US and China together for Germany. It's an economic powerhouse and the region which uh, our, what we did discuss today, Central Asia, is an important part of it. At the moment, how much uh, would you say this market has grown for Germany and, and how do you see it growing in the future? Yeah, it has uh, been growing over the last years with a really very uh, very strong pace uh, and uh, it uh, grows above uh, average so the the, the region uh, has grown much more than the overall german foreign trade that's why it was very important but not only train but also investment it's one of the central areas of german investment and also not only for big corporates but also for small and medium-sized enterprises that's why the region again is very very important for german business and you're here in Brussels talking about your organization and your relations with Central Asia. Are you uh, providing a roadmap for other countries, other European countries, to branch out into Central Asia? Uh, the discussion today was not only about our strategy, but mainly about the EU strategy for Central Asia. I mean, we as Germany, we are quite strong in that region, but we need economic cooperation, we need the support of the European Union, we need common regulation, we need maybe in the, in the future a common economic space from Lisbon to Vladivostok, including Central Asia. Uh, we strongly support the EU strategy of um, connectivity, which is also very important for business. Business. That's why these questions we discussed today and we are only one part of this, uh, I, th I would say, broader European initiative. Is this a European Belt and Road initiative? 
Yeah, it's uh, maybe complementary to Belt and Road. It's, uh, I think we will not win if we try to compete with Belt and Road, but uh, connectivity is more a European philosophy. Uh, and I think uh, it uh, does not only include physical infrastructure, but for example, digital infrastructure, uh, technical regulation, uh, legal standards and, and other, other things. Uh, we have uh, uh, realized uh, many important opportunities which Central Asia is providing as a market, uh, as a young and growing market in particular, also as a, a very important source of uh, energy for the European Union, but also in terms of uh, connectivity, which is being developed between uh, Europe and Asia. And we are looking really to Central Asia as a destination uh, also, not only as a transit point. So all these uh, issues are reflected in the new strategy and today's discussion I uh, very much enjoyed. Uh, has also identified how to better integrate and involve private sector in the implementation of the strategy. I believe this was uh, slightly a, an omission or a shortcoming of the previous process that the, the private sector was not fully uh, involved in uh, these processes. Uh, more or less, uh, they were active, but not in connection with the strategy. Now, we uh, want to also uh, provide more support, more uh, also uh, effort to create a proper enabling environment for our uh, companies, private sector, especially smaller and mid-sized enterprises to uh, look to uh, Central Asia as a market, but also uh, to look to Central Asia also as a potential uh, hub for, uh, let's say, reaching out to other uh, markets and uh, especially South Asia. So these are a couple of novelties, uh, if you wish, uh, and the novelty uh, of the strategy is also a more focus on economic cooperation and uh, private sector development. One of the topics that was raised was an economic area, common economic uh, uh, space between from Lisbon to Vladivostok. Yeah. Would the EU subscribe to that? No, we are not there yet. Uh, I, uh, we are not hiding that uh, because of the problems we have uh, also, in particular with Russia over Ukraine. Um, we cannot disregard these uh, problems uh, also when we are uh, considering more interaction with the European uh, or Euro-Asian Economic Union. Having said that, uh, we are open for pragmatic cooperation in those areas where actually our uh, interaction is needed. Uh, so today's discussion also identified a couple of areas where we could do more. Uh, um, I uh, quite uh, like the idea of promoting uh, common standards uh, in this area. So maybe we can start from here because, of course, uh, this space, Central Asia, but also beyond, very much needs rules-based space and area uh, for doing business and also maybe eliminate uh, the space for uh, something which is decreasing uh, the attractiveness uh, of this area for our businesses. I mean heavily subsidized activities of big players like China and also uh, distorting certain business environmental uh, 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 business environment uh, by this kind of practices and uh, uh, disregard for certain environmental standards and many other things. Uh, uh, Central Asia looks, as you say, east and west at the same time in many ways. Can they, uh, are we in competition with China for that uh, investment? We, how to say it, we are not trying to compete uh, for this space uh, or in this space, uh, but of course um, we want to provide better alternatives maybe for uh, uh, certain things we know uh, better and which uh, we can use our technologies and testing, uh, tested solutions uh, in, um, uh, let's say, um, as alternative to, to Chinese uh, approaches. So. If you want to name it as competition, this might be, but really we want to create a competition in this space which is based on uh, uh, transparent rules of fair and free competition and level playing field for all the operators uh, uh, coming from China or uh, European Union. 
So definitely, as discussed today at this meeting, uh, private sector uh, support uh, in, 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 in different ways, whether it's, uh, first of all, uh, as, as, as uh, well, I said during the discussion, it's rural development uh, and rural uh, private sector, uh, the value chain for, for uh, agriculture and related businesses. Uh, uh, but ob obviously also uh, now we think more and more about other areas as well. So like this blending, so blending grants and loans to help uh, uh, businesses uh, access to, to, to funds, to funding for their, for, their, uh, for their further development and what's connected also education. Education, uh, and uh, we already work in, in, in at least three countries uh, on education as our, like one of our key sectors and we want to further expand it uh, and a lot of this education work will be also related to to private sector support to developing uh, to developing uh, to helping young people uh, get to the job market and and uh, basically what is also i think important stay stay in central asia and and uh, uh, well this uh, there is of course this uh, migration phenomenon to, to, to Russia, to Kazakhstan as well. Uh, it, it, it is here to stay, but uh, we want to offer alternatives for people to, to really to, 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 to work in their countries. Mm.